Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp, and that we're coming live to you, for you, through you, and then again live to you, and then against you. Yep. That was Asaph Adonai on piano. Asaph, what song was that? That is a song called Bernadette by the Four Tops. Nice, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, happy Wednesday, everyone. We're halfway through the week, and it's been a really rainy week. It has, it has been, been pouring a rainy, on us. rainy week. Uh, like I thought, the uh, the floor, like the, the the roof was leaking, mm -hmm. but apparently just a cup was spilled over. So, it false was. alarm. But of course, MCAT's pretty notorious for like if we flood. Um, it's only because our drainage over there, because we're in a ramp area, mm -hmm. and then of course all the leaves that come from fall kind of gunk up all the gutter, the, the storm drain, mm -hmm. and then the rain fills up, and then we just kind of deal with it in the studio, and then we just have to use like floor cleaners, and just it's it's ridiculous because we're in a basement roof yeah. down below. I, I was afraid that was gonna happen like last week or something because uh -huh. it rained like crazy, but it of course, was, um, yeah, you can't expect it to rain too much today, but just enough for it to be somewhat of a nuisance so of course it'll be uh it is currently 37 degrees outside you have a 20 percent chance of isolated showers um tonight's gonna be partly cloudy with a low of 34 you're of course your highs can stay in the 50s all week long so winter isn't upon us but it is definitely fall and wet um the kind of rain that um spring uh people hope for in spring but of course we're all getting it in fall and summer weather it's true it always seems to come um, during the fall and never in the spring like harvest season everyone's harvesting and it's mm -hmm. like oh where was this rain in the spring because it's like it, it, you need the rain it helps grow crops and of course you know even like dry croppers too because you know a lot of the fruits that are dry that um kind of like don't need as much mm -hmm. water they get too much water and then it just like ruins them but it, it's so weird it, it like the weather affects like everything it's, it's true like, it's like this apple tastes terrible maybe it needed about another couple days of rain to taste a little sweeter i actually have some flowers in my garden that didn't really come up this uh summer that are blooming now wow because of the rain and warm that's yeah. insane isn't that weird like they're I only gonna be able to see... bloom for like yeah. a week or two until like the cold frigid weather mm -hmm. just kills them yep yeah the, even their frost didn't do anything to them very interesting so well, kind of re crazy weather but hopefully all this rain will freeze up soon and turn into snow because the rest of the state has snow except for us yeah i talked to a raspberry uh, salesman on um saturdays mm -hmm. you know for our uh not saturday drop-ins which are every saturday from one to five but for saturday during the farmer's market and he said what he does with like dealing with um, frost and all that stuff he says he sprays his crops the night before oh and then they freeze the water they mm. don't freeze the, the liquid in the fruit oh, so that's it's kind of like a coating yeah. of frost over the fruit and then it melts and then it's totally fine mm -hmm. oh that's interesting wow it works okay. for him doesn't mean it's gonna work for you that's true yeah good tip though maybe you guys should try it out at home yeah Right. But of course, if you want to find more information, you can log on to uh, weather.gov. But of course, if you want to find more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write out to us, and it's now even more complicated and longer to find our website. Uh, you can also like us on our Facebook page, sending a nice, beautiful view of the mountains, courtesy of our very own Ron Scholl. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula. MCAT also has a Twitter. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. To, and we have a Facebook page as well. You guys can like us on there. But to find out more information or to watch us live online, you can check us out on MCAT.org. And, of course, if you guys haven't checked it out, uh, the volleyball game between Sentinel and Big Sky uh, ended in a blowout uh, with Big Sky losing uh, three uh, matches in a row. So it, it live streamed last night, and I was pretty much uh, back at MCAT around 8.15, Who were 8 they playing against? It was Big Sky High School. Big, against who? Uh, Sentinel. Oh, Sentinel. So okay. all the live stream sports we've done is all like Sentinel exclusive, and hopefully by next year we'll be able to do like all the sports. So it's not just about one team or another team. Yeah. Like once a week it'll be a home game. For and so I wasn't paying attention. So Sentinel just crushed Big Sky. Well, good job, girls. Sentinel has been really, really killing pretty it. dominant. Like every 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 game I've seen, I think they've only lost one match. Mm -hmm. But it so it's only gone from three to about four matches because it's best of five. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, I've got some news stories for you guys. Yes. So up next, we've got some trending news. Um, and so these are just some things that I thought were really interesting. So uh, first up, we've got some international news. So in Saudi Arabia, they have taken the rare step of executing a member of the royal family after he was found guilty of murder. Wow. And so one of their princes uh, actually shot and killed someone in a coral. It was they were just like fighting, you know. How I how it reads is it reads like a bunch of maybe intoxicated men just you know wanting up one upping each other. But he actually went as far as shoot one of them. Yeah. And so um, they found him guilty of murder and they actually executed him. Wow. And so they didn't say exactly like how they did it, but um, usually in Saudi Arabia and the royal family they do beheadings. 
Wow. Which is very intense, yeah. It sounds really intense. And so the last time that they put a, one of the royal family members to death was in 1975 when Prince Fasil bin Musad was beheaded for assassinating King Fasil, wow. which I think was his uncle. Jeez, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. So, but I also read something else that they have up to a thousand members in their family. Oh, there's so many. And so the ones that hold the the princes are the ones that usually like hold the power and hold the majority of the wealth. Yeah. Yeah. So that's wild. So I found that on CNN. Um, and then I, there are these two Iranian American men. There's a father and son have been sentenced to ten years in prison and fined four point eight million dollars. Wow. Um, because they said they were convicted and sentenced for cooperating with Iran's enemies, which is a government euphemism that usually implies cooperation with the United States. Well, a couple of years ago, I looked online about uh, which has the highest density of um, population mm -hmm. and like who has more kids mm -hmm. in a family than anywhere else. And Afghanistan and surrounding areas are the largest families with an average of about nine kids per wow. family. And uh, Japan is the lowest with like, I think they're at negative one. Wow. Wow, because they have so many people. China too, huh? Well, uh, China has a, a lot of people for sure. And But Japan, they just haven't that they're actually like governments actually paying people to have kids there that's how desperate they are to have kids very interesting yeah. huh yeah so um that's just interesting that those two guys are going to jail and i feel bad for them and that's it's very dangerous over in the middle east right now everyone wants to like travel and i don't think now it's the time to travel especially not to the middle east unless you're a journalist and that's what you want to do um, um it's worse for journalists than anyone else I, it is <laughs> it's worse for like absolutely yeah. And then my last news article um, is local and it's about in Missoula. So in Missoula, in the Missoula County Records Center, they have 10,000 boxes of county records dating back to the 1800s. So they have got, and it's, this is open to the public and anyone can go in there and read these records, which is really cool because they've got shelves of old volumes. Um, and it's like commissioner's notes dating to 1865, deed and land trust. They also have, uh, they have an entire box that contains corn inquest from suspicious deaths hmm. from 1870 to 1902 so they have all these really cool old records from you know when Missoula first started and it's open to the public and I thought that was really really neat so I found that on the Missoula and you guys can read the entire article um, but it's at the Missoula County Records Center which I don't know where that is but I definitely want to go and check that out yep Missoula has a very interesting history. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. interesting. Well, you know, we're still... It was like the first town that just said no to the Wild West, even though there were so many frontiersmen just come through here mm -hmm. and, like, trying to start up trouble. And then people here were just like, not in our town. Yeah, one story that the Missoulian was quoting that, uh, that one of the, the manager of the Missoula County Records House was telling was that there was a suspicious death of uh, three men by some Native Americans. Mm. But they couldn't, like, prove it, I don't think. Yeah. So it's interesting. So that's what I've got for you guys. I found those on CNN as well as the Missoulian. Yep, and I and I have a new um, introspective uh, um, oh. poem video for you guys, and awesome. then I'll talk about what's going on on MCAT after this. Being misunderstood is common. Oh no. Being misunderstood is common. It's hard to remember a time when I was welcomed. Time is always counting down. I am parking. You can stay in my spot, but not forever. You can push my buttons. You may not remember at first, but you can learn. I learn, but never change. I take yours, but never reciprocate. Like a one-way street, I serve one function. Traffic passes by like an ocean crashing on the beach. I am parking. The only thing that moves is time and you don't have much time. It can seem like a lifetime, but is this life a life worth living? The sun shines and work better than before. I wish you could stay forever, but you cannot. I am parking.
Thank you very much. <laughs> but of course, we do have some new things going on. Um, we have our monthly Democratic meeting that happens uh, at once a month. Yep. And it's going to be airing a brand new episode uh, today, tonight. Nice. Um, and also we have City Band. City Band is every single Wednesday at 9 p.m. You can check it out. Uh, we're running out of programs. It's a part seven. So it's a uh, it's part seven, like a part 10 series. But then, of course, we have a highlight special at the very end of this series, which I definitely look forward to because it shows all the best music, uh, according to Ron. According to Ron, yes. But, um, but, of course, without further ado, here is the Missoula County Dems, and they're talking about uh, the refugees here in Missoula. The Refugee Admissions Program, which officially came into life with the 1980 Refugee, Admission, uh, Refugee Act, um, but had existed previous to that, it's a program that recognizes that there is a, a need as America to provide assistance and support globally as a global actor. When you look at, the, at what's going on globally and you look at these huge numbers of displaced persons and refugees, I mean, I think this is what you're talking about. Like, where is our responsibility there? I will, I will tell you that refugee resettlement is not a solution to the world's refugee problem. It's not. It's our opportunity to be able to help a few families, to bring that to our public eye, to influence policy that, that, that creates compassion and kindness, but it is absolutely not a, a solution to the world's refugee problem. We're back and we've got some events for you for Wednesday. So today we've got some, we're starting off with some fitness classes. We've got pole fitness starting at 9 a.m. over at Mask Studio. And then at 10 a.m. at the Learning Center at Red Willow, which is located on 825 West Kent Avenue, is Yoga for Wellness with Rasa O'Neill. Um, and that's at 10 a.m. It's $40 for four weeks or $12 to drop in. Taekwondo is at the Children's Museum of Missoula that starts at 11. There is an Excel class at the Missoula Public Library at 1230. You guys can register at 721-2665 and they'll teach you all how to use Microsoft Excel, which is really good for inputting data and organizing things. Middle School Writers is at the Public Library at 330. This is a writing group for grades 6 through 9. And then at the Missoula Public Library at 4 o'clock is our Teen Artist Workshop. So that's from 4 to 6. It's every thir third Wednesday. And they uh, pretty much these artists will share their art and then a few creative tricks. And it's pretty much, you know, get together, collaborate, make some art. And then at the Missoula Public Library, they've got Painter Pumpkin Day. It starts at 4 o'clock, so you can go into their maker space. And it's a drop-in time for folks to go in and decorate their own pumpkins with the materials they have. At Imagination Brewing Company, they've got their farmer's market. It starts at 5 o'clock, so if you guys aren't able to get to the market on Saturdays, and you know the Tuesday market is now no more, you can go over to Imagination Brewing Company and still get some, uh, some goods. At the Kettle House on the north side, starting at 5 o'clock, they've got their Community Unite. This is going to be for uh, Muscular Dystrophy Association of Montana. So 50 cents from each beer sold goes back to them. We have a couple of ballet classes at the Downtown Dance Collective. They've got an adult ballet class starting at 5. And then at Mask Studio, they have also an adult beginning ballet class that starts at 5.30. And then at Burn Street Bistro, they have got a meat and greet butchering demonstration. So it's starting at 6 o'clock, they are going to be, they have got a third annual butchering demonstration. So they'll teach you how to butcher some animals. Some cool, um, yeah. It'll be a demonstration, some tips and tricks. This will be hosted by Cloven Hoof, which is also always at uh, the farmer's market. So if you guys want to register for that, you can go to hellgatehuntersandanglers.org. Um, I have the website up, but it was too long to even like split onto, it was too long, so I could only put it onto one, you know, it just wouldn't really 
register right if it was split up. So go to hellgatehuntersandanglers.org if you guys want to sign up for that. And then over at Green Pharmacy, they have got a, it's at Green Path Herb School. And so they've got a kind of class, like a, about a herb class. So it's herbal teas and syrups, and it starts at 6 o'clock. And so if you guys want to register for that, you can call 274-2009. And then at the Sunrise Saloon, we've got Country Dance Lessons with Instructor Kathy Clark at 7. And the Broadway, we've got Brains on Broadway Trivia at 7 o'clock. Live Bingo at the Dark Horse, also at 7 o'clock. And then we have a couple different places where you can watch the uh, Demo- the debate tonight. So tonight is our final installment of the debate. It's going to be out of Las Vegas. It starts at 7 o'clock. So you can watch it in the University of Montana in the UC Theater at 7. Or you can watch it at Imagination Brewing Company, also at 7. And then the Top Hat Lounge also is hosting it at 7 o'clock. But if you guys don't want to go to that, you can also go watch The Thing at the Roxy, which is kind of comparable to the debate. Um, And that starts at 7 o'clock. And then Dracula is opening up. This is a play. It's going to be at the University of Montana, the Montana Ooh. Theater. Uh, it starts at 7.30, and it will be running several nights in a row, so you guys can check that out. Um, there's a karaoke contest at the Eagles Lodge in Missoula at 8.30. At the VFW, Armageddon Blues Jam will be playing at 8.30. There's karaoke at the Badlander at 9. Milk Crate Wednesday at the Palace at 9 o'clock. Karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon at 9 o'clock. And then uh, Moon Honey with Cardinal Kin at Stage 112 at 10. And that is free if you're 21 and older, but if you're 18 and 18 to 20, it's only 5 bucks. And then Westward, Two Foot and Two Foot Titan will be at the Rear Lounge at 10 o'clock. And it's the same pricing. 18 to 20 is $5. And then 21 and up is free. And so that's what I've got going on for you guys for Wednesday. Up next, we have Musical Notes with Asaf Adonai. There's an old saying, be careful what you ask for, you just might get it. <laughs> Our guest on today's musical notes got just what he asked for when he asked to be a fish. And he wound up helping the Navy save the day in the 1964 comedy movie, The Incredible Mr. Limpet. Our guest dreamed of the day he could use the one bullet his cousin Sheriff Andy Taylor gave him. He always fired his pistol accidentally while in its holster (laughs) or in the ceiling in the courthouse. Our guest is Jesse Donald Knotts, known to the world as Don Knotts. (laughs) And there he is with his one little bullet. That was such an amusing scene on the Andy Griffith Show. He was just so much of a klutz that he couldn't have bullets in the holster. So Sheriff Taylor would just give him one bullet and he'd always shoot the one bullet on the floor. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh well. So anyway, our guest is Don Knotts, good old reliable Deputy Barney Fife. And to say a few things about Don Knotts, Don Knotts was an American comic actor best known as Barney Fife on The Andy Griffith Show, a 1960 sitcom for which he earned five Emmy Awards. He also played in films like I mentioned, The Incredible Mr. Olympic in which he plays a talking fish throughout the film and he's also hit his stride another time in the 1970s and 80s on the television sitcom Three's Company where he plays Ralph Furley. Now in 1996 TV Guide ranked him number 27 on its 50 greatest TV stars of all time. Isn't that something? Just for playing these comedy characters. And some other things about Don, he graduated from Morgantown High School and after enlisting in the Army and serving in World War II, he earned a bachelor's degree from the West Virginia University in 1948. And he spent most of his time in the Army entertaining troops, which I'm not surprised. You can see him there with uh, his character, Mr. Limpet. So anyway, um, he began his career doing um, a ventriloquist act and he had a puppet named Danny Hooch Matador. <laughs> and he got his first break in television on a soap opera called Search for Tomorrow. And he appeared in that from 1953 to 1955. And uh, then he appeared in his first film with Andy Griffith before the Andy Griffith Show in a film called No Time for Sergeants in 1958. And um, let's see, um, some other things real quick. Some of his post-Mayberry films, 
He did a movie called It's a Mad, 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 Mad World with Jonathan Winters in 1963. Mr. Uh, the Incredible Mr. Limpet was in 1964. The Reluctant Astronaut in 1967. The Shakiest Gun in the West in 1968. From there, he went on to work steadily until 1979 when he was cast on Three's Company. And he continued to work even while on Three's Company. And uh, finally, in 1998, he appeared with Andy Griffith in Matlock, playing the pesky neighbor Les Calhoun in 1992. And in 2000, he was recognized with the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So that's kind of a flyover of the entire career of Don Knotts because, I mean, he's accomplished a lot more. I mean, the resume is like 12 or more pages long. But like I always say with characters, in his case, he'll always be associated with Barney Fife and the Andy Griffith Show. And I'll stop on that note there. Nice. Yeah. Thank you very much, Asa. Sure. That was Musical Notes Play Stuff Out of Nine. Yeah, and up next we have some more uh, Thursday <laughs> events. So uh, are you excited for any uh, events that are happening tonight? I'm, I'm personally uh, excited for the Science. Dracula premiere. <coughs> Excuse me, everyone. Hmm. It seems like the University of Montana's uh, theater program goes all out with a lot of their programs. I saw Chicago. That was probably the last play I ever saw there was Chicago. And that was really well done. Yes, I am excited for Dracula. I would actually really, really like to see that. Um, and then as far as some other events, you know, I'm not quite sure. There's lots of good music out, but I'm not quite sure if I'm going to go out <laughs> and listen to music. Yeah. But I have events for you guys for Thursday, so we'll move on to those. So, starting at 9 a.m., so kids have got, are out of school Thursday and Friday, so we've got some kids' activities. MCT is doing play in a day that starts at 9 a.m. And so children, uh, kindergarten through 12, uh, you know, 12th grade, We'll rehearse and perform a small musical. Camp will begin at 9. The show is at 5.30, and then the camp ends at 6. There's art guide training at the Missoula Art Museum starting at 10 a.m. Also at 10 a.m. is Missoula is NAMI Missoula Weekly Meeting. This is at the Providence Center, and this is a free weekly meeting for anyone affected by mental illness or interested in learning about NAMI. Active Cube is at the Children's Museum of Missoula. It starts at 11. So Active Cube is a cube where you roll it, and then it shows you what activity you do, and then everyone does it. At the Learning Center at Red Willow, at, located at 825 West Kent Avenue, they've got their Meditation for Veterans class. It starts at 115. It's an ongoing class. And then at 1.30 at NAMI Missoula, which is located on 202 Brook Street, they have got their NAMI Connection Support Group. So this is a free weekly support group for adults living with mental illness. The Zootown Arts Community Center has got a couple uh, activities going on today or tomorrow. Uh, their first one starting at 2.30 is Explorations of Art Around the World. And so this is for $95 or $85 for members. It'll be on Thursdays from 2.30 to 5, um, October 20th through December 1st. And so it'll explore the fascinating avenues of contemporary and historical art making around the world. At the Missoula Public Library, they've got computer electronics in their makerspace. It starts at 3 o'clock. And then at the Zootown Arts Community Center, they've got a sugar skull workshop that starts at 3 o'clock. It goes until 6. It's free. And so sugar skulls represent a departed soul. And so they're going to make these uh, for anyone that has lost someone or else make them for the also for the uh, Day of the Dead parade coming up. I would show up, but then all the skulls would vanish. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me, you guys. Are you okay? <coughs> no. Okay. I'm not okay. Want me to take over for you? Alright, here's the next thing. Get out of here! Venomous Hunters. Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah. Do a butterfly house and exact our door. Get out of here! It's fine, it's fine. Okay. Okay, so starting at 3 o'clock, it goes good. Starting at 3 o'clock is Venomous Hunters, if you guys can make that out for what Scott was saying. At the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium. There are a handful of venomous hunters out there, and they're going to be learning about them and their different techniques uh, during their drop-in activity. So that is from 3 to 5, starting tomorrow. And then they also have their spider, spider feeding at 3.30. They're feeding Rosie the Chilean, Rosie or Tarantula. So you guys can learn about spider feeding, hunting, and habits. 
at the Missoula City Council Chambers. They've got a Help Shape Our Transportation Future meeting. It starts at 5 o'clock. And so it looks like Activate Missoula is uh, the up-to-date Missoula's... Okay, hang on. It's Missoula Cultural Council. Okay, so Missoula Cultural Council will definitely hear about this on Friday from Scott. And so they are updating a 30-year-long range transportation plan. So yeah. they're inviting you to their open house to hear all about this and put in your input about that. That'll be tomorrow at the city council chambers and maybe we'll hear about it on Friday from Scott. At the Missoula Senior Center at 5.30, there's a community discussion about memory loss and dementia. Um, and so it's a panel discussion with a retired physician, a retired clinical pharmacist um, who was newly diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and the executive director of Montana Chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. So that would be a really good info session if anyone is interested about that. And then we have another art class at the ZAC at Zutend Arts Community Center. They're making Papel Picado and Paper Marigolds. They're doing this in honor of the Day of the Dead Festival that is coming up at the end of, at the very beginning of November. So that's it from 6 to 8, and it's free. You don't, you can just show up. You don't have to register. And all the things will disappear after I go through there. Yep. It's like I'm against Day of the Dead Parade. <laughs> Watch out for Scott. <laughs> <laughs> at Mask Studio, they've got aerial yoga starting at 6.30. This is open for all levels and all abilities so you guys can even just try it out if you want to and then at the downtown dance collective they've got a beginning flamenco class it starts at 6 30 um so it's going to run october 20th to november 16th 53 dollars for members 65 dollars for non-members and so uh, you can call the ddc to register you can call 541-7240 if you guys want to register and sign up for that then at the Good Food Store, they have a cooking class. It's called British Pub Fair. It starts at 5.30, or starts at 6.30. It's $35. And so they're going to be making Scotch, Scotch eggs, sausage and puff pastry, fish and chips, beef and Guinness stew, bread and butter pudding. Those all sound like a heart attack, but that sounds great. I like how you're about to say Scott eggs. Yes. They're my eggs. Scott's eggs. <laughs> Get out of here. They're mine. <laughs> and then the Roxy has got Metropolis. They're showing the movie Metropolis, Ooh. which is a, a silent film from the 20s. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But they're playing it with a live score. And wow. so the live score is going to be performed by Love is a Dog from Nebraska. Gee. That's really cool. It should be great, yeah. And then at the Downtown Dance Collective, they've got a tap dance class for adults at 7.30. There's live jazz at Plonk at 8. Julie Bug and Northern Exposure will be at the Sunrise Saloon at 8.30. There's an open mic at 9 on the Broadway. Dead Hipsters, Dead Hipsters at the Badland are also at 9. And then we have karaoke at the Dark Horse at 9 o'clock. You guys can check out all these events and more on MissoulaEvents.net. You guys can also check out the Missoulian, the Independent, and the University of Montana website for more events happening in your community. Yes, I sure have a lot of talking with words today. I have a lot of uh, city council stuff I'm going to be talking about. I have Hallmarker Bullmark, uh, just a whole bunch of array of stuff. Um, this Friday, um, I'm doing a press conference where they're doing some groundbreaking uh, for just the press. It's not open to the public. It's just a nice. press thing. So I'm going to be there. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, and they're doing a groundbreaking for the Mo Fort Missoula Regional Park. Oh, cool. So it's going to be like in a work zone. Uh -huh. uh, things are going to be dug up. Things are going to be just like crazy all over the place. That's um, exciting. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, but I have some city council. And yesterday, um, city, uh, I wasn't able to access the internet because the internet was down and all that stuff. But I have internet now. But, of course, I did the city council just all pre-done, mm -hmm. pre-did. Um, I just grabbed it from the uh, MCATs because we film it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I just grabbed it. And I'm basically going to be playing it from our Final Cut 10 program. Um, it costs like $400 for a Final Cut Pro if you want it at home. But uh, yeah, it, the first thing starts off with, uh, this is uh, Charlene um, Campbell Carey, and she's talking about the uh, VIBE, which is, stands for the Vienna in International Ballet Experience. And I did it last year, and I gotta say, it was amazing. They brought a lot of great dancers, remember? Mm -hmm. We showed some of that last yeah. year? Yeah. Um, it was so good. Yeah. It was really good. This was the first year they did it, and this, I'll basically, I'll let her explain a little bit more about this and how what you can expect from this January. And then this is like looking way ahead too, but this is um, Charlene Cam um, Campbell Carey. So after the holidays are over, everybody can regroup by enjoy welcoming about 200 dancers. Um, that's what we had last year. We might have as many as 400. We expected 1,000 people last year. We had 6,000. So I don't think we'll have any less than that. It could go up to 10. 
Um, we have 100 dancers registered now. We're partnering with the Mansfield Center again, and it's a three-component deal. It's a dance challenge for open category dancers, which ranges from our Native Americans to the hip-hop and everything else, and it also brings in a very high, high level of elite ballet dancers to this very unlikely destination to compete um, for scholarships and cash and careers. All right. Uh, couldn't have said it better myself, which I, in which I didn't. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, great, Scott. <laughs> yeah, but of course, uh, City Council. Let's. I'm going to jump in in here, and um, let's see. Uh, of course, up next we have the Greeno Park rezoning. And, uh, and there's no quotes from here, but I have a nice little printout of it. Um, they have they're changing a line relocation. So if you guys could take a good look at this map, a lot of it was just like altering it because they're doing some um, new uh, construction and new sites and stuff. So they're going to actually adjust the trail a little bit to uh, make it flow a little more for a lot of people. So that's kind of like what they were major talking uh, about with the uh, rezoning and whatnot. So, nice. Yep. Uh, Greeno Park is always kind of like up for change and all that stuff. But of course, thus far, there's no uh, feedback on it. Like, it's just new. Most people, they sent letters out to the people in the neighborhood. No one really knows about it. And this is one of the meetings where they're actually talking about it. So, of course, if you want more information, you can go onto the city's website. Um, but of course, um, the mayor, uh, I think he get basically introduces the next segment of this uh, of city council a lot better than I ever could. So here is uh, the mayor introducing the next one. And this is a sign that I've been mayor for a very long time because I never thought we'd have a conversation about the keeping of ducks and quail. But I'm glad we've reached that point this evening. Our staff report comes from Councilwoman Cares. All right, so um, like I said, like he said, um, uh, Michelle Cares kind of introduces the uh, the whole uh, the whole idea of the uh, the permit, uh, the, and it's called basically the uh, Michelle Cares request that the permit uh, the keeping of female ducks and quail on parcels of land under an acre in size, plus um, changing the fowl permit, just like waterfowl and stuff like that. And of course, here's Michelle on a little bit more on that. Currently, the amendment and ordinance that you have before you um, brings in ducks and quail. It, right now, you can have up to six chickens, and so this would allow six chickens and or ducks or ten quail. Um, there are no male fowl allowed at all for breeding reasons primarily, um, and then there are some prohibitions that you'll see there um, under D1 and um, it talks a little bit about the fee that I mentioned changing from annual to one time. All right so um, like she said they're going to change the annual fee that's one of the bigger things is that they want to encourage people to take part on it because there hasn't been actually too many people who actually uh, uh, are permitted to have animals in the backyard because they never got the permit and yet they'd still have animals in their <laughs> backyard <laughs> without a permit. So of course this one-time fee is a big plus for a lot of people who want to uh, help move this forward so you only have to pay for it once. Um, let me go to the next page and of course um, of course the quail it, that's only permitted there is the northern native uh, bobway quail which is a uh, native species here in Montana and North America. They want to keep a lot of the species native so you can't bring any like a uh, New Guinea quail or something like that. Um, I don't even know if they have quail. But still. <laughs> they probably uh, the issue seems very present and as the ecosystem for ducks because it's like if you want ducks in the backyard you have to provide a nice living arrangement for the animals right. It's like if you really think about it it's like if you want an animal in your backyard you have to provide the source. It's, camp it's not like a dog where you just like it just happy no matter where it's at. Um, so this is uh, Michelle, she talks a bit more about uh, um, the uh, waterfowl and providing ecosystem. E ecosystem. We need to ask animal control to provide more material. Maybe it could talk about water. Maybe it could talk about abandonment of, fail, of fowl, excuse me. Um, but that is not, I think, a place for policy. And so it would just be something we would recommend to staff. All right, so of course, um, that's, it's still kind of up in there. They don't really know what they're gonna do with uh, the water quail and all that stuff. But of course, our next guy is, this is, uh, this is Jeff from Animal, Animal Control. And of course, he answers a lot of questions people may have, just like he kind of gives it a nice a little array, a nice overview of what's to come with this. I don't have any science. I can't stand here in front of you and pass a red face test and say that ducks would be bad for Missoula. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they would be bad for Missoula. Uh, I think the way it's proposed is acceptable, and if uh, it doesn't work out, we could always come back and, and change things if we needed to, but I don't see any reason why we couldn't have ducks. Um, 
but it does open the, the proverbial can of worms of, well, what about um, Guinea, and what about Turkey, and what about this? And, and I, I got an email just today in that kind of regards. Is it, it, a city councilman and councilwomen, you guys have to decide what you know your constituents will 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 take. All right. So that was kind of like just an overview of what was going on there. I'm just going to skip ahead a little more and go to uh, John Wilkins. And of course, he has some um, concerns about uh, mixing some of the bird species because um, this is why. One thing, I know a little bit about chickens because I did live on a farm once in my life. Um, and thank God I don't live by a farm now. Uh, chicken and quail. Chickens are pretty dang mean when it comes to other birds with them. So does that mean you have to uh, have two pens and do all the things in the ordinance where the chicken, you know, so far from the house and the pen's so big? And no. So your esteemed counsel just said disorderly conduct could come into play. Um, something to think about. Further discussion? All right. Uh, so that that was one of the uh, concerns that John Wilkins had on that. Um, let's see. <laughs> um, but of course, John Wilkins has been actually opposed to this ordinance from the very beginning since they passed the chicken ordinance. Uh, but of course, also explain a little bit more about that a little bit later. Here is Marilyn Marler on why she's uh, for this new ordinance as well. I plan to vote for this, but I just wanted to comment that this go round is much less exciting than the original chicken ordinance. <laughs> and. Um, no one wore a costume or anything. I'm still going to vote for it. <laughs> All right. So that was uh, Marilyn Mahler. And then, of course, it, yeah, it, it's kinda, it got kind of ridiculous that last night, of course. I don't know why people were quacking in the audience. But, yeah. Of course, Jordan has um, – he also supports this, and he also talked a little bit more about um, – um, this chicken ordinance in the beginning is why he actually got interested in city council in the first place. So here's a little bit of that. I remember I just uh, couldn't help but state that one of the ways that I got uh, interested in, in council was I was in school and there was a poster I think of Ms. Rye um, riding a chicken um, that was about a candidate for him and, and I just remember how, how contentious the thing was and so I think that's great. Um, I think that the problem for me with the fee, I think the one-time fee is great because it, it removes a barrier which is the inconvenience of, of getting the permit. Um, I think we need to figure out a way to get more compliance with actually getting a permit because by my uh, calculation 4% of the permits uh, are held by people sitting around this table. All right. <laughs> so they, uh, of course, he went on to explain that the fee is good to encourage people to actually sign up for the program as well, rather than just um, being allowed. I mean, like you can have chickens in your backyard, but um, the, uh, one of the big, the rub basically is that you have to have a permit to have it. Like mm -hmm. regardless, it's it's basically so the city can keep tabs on who has chickens, basically. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that, there's no like better way of explaining it. it. It's like, that's it. That's, you know, of course, Jordan has, is also talking about improving the education, education side of chicken owners, you know, just kind of helping people like who don't know how to raise chickens, who get chickens and what they're supposed to do if they get like a rooster or whatever. But of course, regardless of all this stuff, John Wilkins is definitely opposed to this. And um, this is, um, this is definitely one of my favorite uh, quotes from this. Because I always thought a good chicken was Kentucky fried, but... Uh, and I'm not going to support this neither. If I wanted to live next to a farm, I would have bought property next to a farm. And I did not want to live next to a farm because I grew up on a farm and I hate farms <laughs> <laughs> as far as living next door to them. So there are a lot of work and there are a lot of smells. And I think chickens will end up smelling if people don't take care of them and ducks will too. So I'm not going to support it. All right, so yep, he's definitely not going to support he it. He hates farms. He just, yeah, bad experience and stuff like that. But <laughs> um, of course, the motion did, of course, pass, and you can have ducks and quail as long as they're native species and they're not like invasive species that can just like overpopulate, just go crazy, and they have to be female. So, of course, you know why would you want a male? Males can't have eggs, so you know that's why you have females so they can lay the eggs, and you can make uh, Scotch eggs or Scots eggs. Anyways, um, towards the end of the meeting, John. Um, John Engen talks about the uh, suicides that have totaled about a number of 25 in Missoula, which makes it the highest rate in the state. So Missoula is the highest rate of suicides in the state of Montana, but of course Montana is fifth in suicides nationwide. 
But that's a good thing because, as I reported on last year for one of my journalism classes, that Montana used to be number one for suicides. And so now we're fifth on this new study. So that is really, really good. Way to go, Montana. Good job. Yeah. So that means that something has changed. Either we've gotten more health care or, you know, better mental health facilities. Yeah. Or that people have just spread the word. So that's yeah, really Yeah, awesome. awareness is another big thing. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, uh, providing awareness uh, for, uh, like, systems in place to help these individuals who are going through a rough patch as well Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's interesting um i don't like to put a number on it a lot of times it kind of feels very just like um yeah it takes you out of it you know it's not very and not it's like they just throw a number at it and and it's like it it leaves the personality of it there's like 25 people aren't here anymore yeah it just it just removes the personable from it yeah it moves i I guess the word i'm looking i don't know what the word i'm looking for like personal like personal like it makes it It makes it less personal if you put a number on it makes it way less personal it's just a number not like a real person yep yeah but of course uh the last quote i have is from john wilkins once again but of course this is him talking about veterans day he is a Vietnam War veteran, and he talks about what you guys can do to uh, support his um, veteran um, campaign for November 11th, with it, which is Veterans Day. November 11th is Veterans Day, and every Veterans Day I collect socks for Valor House. This year the socks will go to Valor House and the Pavarello, because the Pavarello is also uh, housing veterans. So the reason I collect socks goes all the way back to World War I. World War I, troops were in the trenches. And when it rained, the trenches got very wet, their feet got wet and muddy, and when they got a good change in new socks, it made their day. Well, that's kind of went on for combat troops uh, ever since then. My experience in Vietnam, and especially during the monsoon season, when my feet got wet, I was miserable. When I got a good, clean pair of dry socks, I was happy. So that's kind of the reason I chose socks. But the other reason is, remember our vets, remember the Valor House and the uh, Pob that uh, actually puts put up with them and try to get them going back again in society. And, and we need that. It's an ongoing need. Thank you. All right, so that concludes nice. your city council uh, report. and. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want more information, you can go on the city of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. But of course, I'm not going to show that to you. I'll just get through it because I have um, a new uh, Hallmark or Bullmark. Yeah. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. All right, are you guys ready for Hallmark or Bullmark? So the game basically works. Oh, now you can hear myself. Um, <laughs> I I just turn up the headphone volume and that stuff like that. But anyways, uh, I read a synopsis from a Hallmark original movie, or do I? And you guys out here, and maybe at home, have to determine whether it's a real Hallmark original movie or it's complete Bullmark. So, without further ado, here is Hallmark or Bullmark. (coughs) I don't know why I cleared my throat. It's pointless. It was just a normal, small town until Chrissy Moon came through. As she began... As she begins to cast a spell on some of the townsfolk, Greg Halton, for instance. It's a chance for love on the most spiritual days of the year, Halloween. Greg, not believing in the magic of Halloween, will soon find that the spirit of love will soon find him. And the movie's <laughs> called Spirit of Love. <laughs> is this a Hallmark original movie or is this something I made up? Mm. I don't know. It does, I'm going to say... Ooh, I'm gonna say Hallmark. What do you think, Asa? I'm gonna say Bullmark. You say Bullmark? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, okay. So one of you is right. Ooh, okay, what is it? It's Bullmark. Ah! It's totally fake. I knew it. Yeah. But, but it I sounds real. It sounded real. Well, it didn't make sense, so I was like, it's gotta be a real movie. <laughs> it never makes sense. I literally have to expand on Hallmark original movies yeah. to make them sound like at least a little more legible, because their synopsis is like really simple. Two people fall in love. But they hate each other. But they first. hate each other at first. Yeah. Always, all the time. Oh, uh-huh. Like uh, Catherine Heigl is like in all these movies. <laughs> she just like hangs out in the back. Hey, hey love me. Uh, she's oh, terrible. Don't hate me. I, I don't see any of her movies. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I heard she's very difficult. Anyways, um, here's the next movie. In this spooky Halloween movie, we meet a young and fun Letitia Jones, a free spirit party girl. Gets she gets oh. Get, mit, get get misplaced in small town in Massachusetts. 
she finds that even the smallest towns know how to throw a Halloween bash, where she meets the, a mysterious man in a Victorian mask. With Halloween being a part of this small town, will Letitia get a second chance with a mysterious stranger? And it's called Mysteries of Miss Jones. <laughs> is this a Hallmark original movie or is this Bullmark? Mm, I'm gonna say Hallmark again. Yeah, me too. <sighs> well, guys, it's Bullmark. What? Yes, yeah, oh. a double Bullmark extravaganza. Oh, well, all right, I was wrong. Yeah. Very wrong. We, like we, and also, I guess I thought it was gonna give it away because um, last night there was no internet. So I wrote them without the internet. Oh, well, I don't know when you do these. Uh, you never do. And you never will. Ah! <laughs> well, that was good. Okay, so uh, Asaph got one right. I did not get any right. But that's okay. Boo. It's always next week. Always next week. Always Keep up my game. Whew. All right. So if you guys want more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can also play Hallmark or Bullmark at home, the home game of Hallmark or Bullmark coming to you uh, from Hasbro or whatever. Hasbro. <laughs> from Hasbro, not Hasbro. It's like Hasbro. Ha from Hasbro. Okay, so you can also like <laughs> us on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. MCAT also has a Twitter. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information about us or just watch us online live, go to <laughs> MCAT.org. Yep. MCAT.org is a great resource to find out uh, what new programs are happening on MCAT um, tonight or tomorrow night, as well as later in the week. And of course, uh, thank you all for joining me this morning, and thanks for playing Hallmark or Bullmark. And as always, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. And my name is Noel McAvoy. Here's ASAP Adonai, and we'll see you guys all on Friday.